I'm going to show you how to install the Cellsun CS331 LED limelight into a magic lantern. This new unit replaces a conventional incandescent lamp or whatever you might have existing in your lantern. The first thing we have to do of course is to take out the existing illuminant from the tray. Now there are several ways of installing the new CS331 depending on how you want to do it and how your lantern is equipped. The first method is to use an existing pole mount which slides into the tray at the bottom with its two lips. So here we have an old fashioned illuminant on its pole mount. We simply unclamp the illuminant and put it away in the museum. and we take our LED limelight unit which has got a hole up the middle for a pole mount and then attach the thumb screw through the rear this simply screws into the back you then take the lantern pole mount and slide that up through the bottom and do up the thumb screw until it pinches up reasonably tight. The problem with this sort of mount is it's prone to wobble from side to side or even slip up and down in installation. So we've come up with an alternative method of mounting the unit using some optional brass brackets. These brackets fit either side of the LED heatsink unit and support the illuminant very securely. In order to fit the brackets we need to measure the width between the rails inside the lantern. Now if you use a ruler this can be rather difficult to actually get the ruler inside to get a proper measurement and even using digital calipers can be awkward if the jaws don't reach inside. A much simpler method of doing this however is using a small piece of paper approximately the size that you're trying to measure. So we get our piece of paper, a post-it note is actually quite a handy side or a postcard, slot in just one side here on the left hand side into the lip and then using a pencil or pen mark off where the inside of the lip is on the edge of the paper. We then take the paper out and simply measure it with a ruler. I write down what the width of the feet have, has to be. So here we have the two brackets with their feet. We'll sh just show you first assembling it without adjusting the feet to the exact size so we can see how the whole thing goes together. There are two M4 jack screws which go either side through some bushes at the base of the feet. 
and what these do is that they push against the spacer bar so as to push the feet outwards into the slot once it's installed in the lantern to hold it firmly without sliding around. Next we put in two M4 pan head bolts through the slots in one side bracket top and bottom but not doing them up tightly at this point. This allows us to slide the bracket up and down and make other adjustments. So once we've got those two screws in, we can turn the whole thing over and put the other bracket in. These brackets are identical, but they have a left and a right hand slot so that they can be used either side of the assembly. So this one's already got its uh, jack screw in, remembering to put the spacer in between them. This just slots into position. It just wants to be a loose fit at this point. Then we put in two more M4 pan head bolts through the slot in the bracket into the heatsink. Incidentally this heatsink is arranged with six holes so it can be turned upside down if the centre height of the lamp needs to be lower. This is just a close up to show the assembly of the spacer again. So we just need those screws not quite tight at this point and we have our completed assembly ready for a tryout. Now the feet at the bottom are designed to engage in the lip of the lantern tray. Marked on the bottom of the feet are score lines at quarter inch intervals and these have been put there as a guide to cutting. Now you'll recall we had our measurement we did earlier and what you'll need to do is to translate that measurement onto the completed assembly to work out which line uh, would be optimal for cutting to get the feet to fit the correct width of your lantern. So to do this you would need to take the brackets off again and then very carefully and preferably in a vise cut through along the nominated score line with a junior hacksaw. Then reassemble the brackets checking that we've got the right width and that the jack screws are quite loose. 
Now if the side screws are also loose this will help in squeezing the bracket at the bottom gently so that we can slide the whole assembly into the lantern. The idea of the jack screw is that it should be done up once the LED unit is in position but on some lanterns this is not possible through the door so it's a matter of trial and error to adjust the screw so that it just pinches up tight enough to be able to slide the unit into the lantern. Now the top and bottom side screws if these are left sufficiently loose then once this is done and the correct position for the lamp unit is set up then when those screws are done up tight they tend to pull the feet outwards into the tray and lock, lock the unit solid in position. Of course if your lantern doesn't have a tray and has a, a floor instead then there are holes provided in the feet so that the whole unit could be screwed with wood screws or whatever into the base of the lantern in which case all this procedure we've just been showing you is somewhat unnecessary the correct position of the lamp unit depending on the condenser you have is about two and a half to three inches from the condenser and there is a line marked on the heatsink to show you the lamp center line which would line up with the condenser center line and to get the height right we just simply slide the lamp unit up and down and then tighten up the side screws on both sides checking that the unit is square to the lantern the optimal position for the lamp unit can really only be found by powering everything up without a slide and focusing onto a screen and seeing what sort of light disc you get what you need to aim for is illumination top and bottom and left and right in the next video we will show how the CS332 controller is used